Hey, I have returned, and today I am going to be doing a review of Daughter of Smoke and Bone by Lainey Lani. I have no idea how to pronounce it. Her last name's Taylor, which is pretty simple to pronounce. So I started this book quite a while ago, I have to admit. Um, it was late November when I started this book and I only finished it on the 1st of January, it's the 4th now, so I have delayed this video for quite a while, but I, it did take me quite a, lot, quite a long time to finish it because I wasn't reading much, but still. Um, I also apologise for the state of my voice because I do have a bit of a beginnings of a cold. I seem to never not have colds, so that's just um, uh, something that just comes with me. I was just like, you buy an errand, but you also get a cold. It's like, buy one, get one free. It's <laughs> I don't know why that analogy just came into my head. Okay, so the premise of Daughter of Smoke and Bone is a very interesting concept. It involves a war between the devils, who are like Chimera, 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 I don't know how to pronounce that either. Um, the angels, and they're against the devils and the angels, they're just having a big war that's last, lasted forever. And the protagonist of this book is Karu, who has blue hair and lots of tattoos, which at first I was like, ugh, that's a bit weird. But now I really, really like the originality of her character, it's brilliant. And basically she is raised by uh, Brimstone, Yasri, Issa and Twiga, I think, and then a little bird thing is called Kishmish, which is quite cute. And she lives with these, and they're all like half half lizard, half lion, half something. And that's what the Chimera are, they're half animals, half human, half animal, half animal. Yeah. And she goes out for brimstone and gets him teeth. And there are, you don't know what the teeth do for quite a long time. It's set in Prague first, which I found, I found very interesting because I, I read books, they're just set in like London, New York, Los Angeles, random places, fictional towns in Massachusetts. I'm referencing a TV show I used to watch when I was little here. And they're all just set in normal places like that and I've never actually read one that's set in somewhere that isn't Britain or America or something. So that is the basic concept of Daughter of Smoke and Bone. It's, I liked most of the characters. I, I also like how Lainey, I'm going to call her Lainey, she doesn't have any characters that aren't necessary to the story. I mean, you could argue that Kaz and Mick, I think it's called Mick, aren't necessary to the story, but they, they are, because they are. They're there for the um, the realistic setting and the humour, like Mick is brilliant with Puppet Show, I mean, I'm get, get onto that, get, I'll stop blabbing, get onto that. Um, then Caro is the main character, the love interest is called Akiva. Um, he at the start he's not a love interest. They never it doesn't never really branches out into a love interest, as such. It's just more of a slow thing. And Susanna is Karu's like mundane best friends. You get those stereotypical best friends. Like I've read a lot of books where the best friends are literally the same in every single book, and it doesn't. It's not entertaining. But Susanna is not like that. She. You could argue she has a bit of stereotypicalness within her, but she isn't She isn't the same as everything else. Now, Karu, she is a badass. She is the epitome of badassery. She is amazing, and she is like my favorite protagonist ever. I just, I can't get over how awesome she is. She just kicks ass, kicks ass. In Mortal Instruments, Isabel is like Karu. Isabel is a proper badass. Isabel is amazing. I love her, just love her. And Karu is a lot like that. Karu, she knows when she's gone too far. Because Lainey, Lani, I don't know how you pronounce it, I have this every single time. She takes angels and demons and she makes her own genre with them. And that is what I love. It's just, it's so original. Right. We begin this novel with Karu just going going to her school, her art school, and it's very normal and everything, and yes, and then she goes home, and there's a massive chimera in her shop, who's called Brimstone, and she starts with all these drawings in her book, and they are Brimstone and Yasri and Issa and Twigger and stuff, 
but everyone thinks they're just figments of her imagination. They're not figments of her imagination, they're real things who she lives with. And that is amazing. Okay. The world is a lot to take at first. It is a lot to take because there are the chimera, the angels, the blue hair, the tattoos, all the little drawings that Karu has and all the characters and all the descriptions of the characters. But Lainey doesn't does an awesome job of weaving it in slowly. It's like a little fifth. Alright, the, the wishes are very interesting. I can't remember what they're called. Uh, scuppies are in the necklace, right? And then the Lucknows are in the... Uh, the, the Lucknows are the middle ones and then the... Last ones are the Gavri Gavriels Gavriels. I don't know. How, I don't can't remember. I'm sorry. I read I read that bit like a month ago. Now, when she wished for flight, I was like, "Crew, what if you never come down?" But she came down, and it was all right. And then we came to meet Akiva. And while she's in Marco, no, not Marco. It's Marrakesh. While she's in Marrakesh to meet with Isil, Isil, and Rasgut, who is the little thing on his back, and she meets with him. And she's trading teeth, and he hasn't got as many teeth. And she's like, "Why haven't you got as many teeth?" And then there's a kiva with the handprint all over the portals, and you can't get into elsewhere, which is where all the Chimera live. And then a kiva comes in, and he attacks Karu, and she just puts her hand up, and she's got those little eye things on it because it's she's been resurrected. She's a resurrected Chimera, and and he gets forced backwards, and a kiva gets forced backwards, and then and Karu's like, "Oh my god, my hands!" And then she's like, yeah, 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 with her palms and stuff. And then Akiva's like, I don't even know what that face, but that's like a dead llama face. And it's just so actiony and it's brilliant. And then he's like, who are you? Because she's a human, yet she's got hamsters. And that doesn't make sense. That doesn't make sense at start. I didn't know what hamsters were. I forgot. I didn't couldn't remember what a hamster was. When she mentioned the hamsters, I was like, what's a hamster? And then I went back a bit and I went, oh look, that's a hamster, 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 the thing on her hands. And then you didn't know it was from a re resurrected chimera right until the end of the book. <sighs> I have stopped. It is, it is fine. Okay, the first thing that really grabbed my attention with this, with Daughter of Smoke and Bone, is the wishes. Because she just mentioned the wishes. She wished her hair to be blue and her hair was blue and that is entertaining. And it, it enthralled me, it drew me in, it intrigued me. So I was interested as to why her hair was blue and it just grew blue and why Brimstone was a massive alligator, is he an alligator lion, lion, lizard thing? I can't remember what he is, but he's something like that. And you don't know who Brimstone is and then they all disappear and then Karu goes to her, her little flat she has and then she lives there all by herself and then she doesn't go to school for ages. And then three months pass or something and then Akiva comes back and there's a massive fight again. Then she goes, and then she goes flying with Akiva, I think. And then there's that thing with Zuzana, the dancing, the dancing show, which was brilliantly written. I loved how descriptive and poetic that scene, like those couple of scenes were, because they were just so lovely and it made me really happy. But yeah, and then Akiva comes back and ruins it, and then Akiva's siblings come back. I can't remember what they're called. I think they're called Liraz and Hazel. I think I'm not really very sure. And then they're like. Oh yeah, she's a devil, and he's like, what? And then she throws up her hamsters again. Hamster I keep calling them hamsters. They're not hamsters. <laughs> they're not little bony rodents on her hands. They're hamsters. Their eyes, their open eyes. And they're like, I know who she is. And then he's like, I know who she is. And there are some flashbacks with Akiva about Madrigal. And then you don't know who Madrigal is. And then at the end of the book, you find out how, Mad who, how who Madrigal is. And then you find out she's Karu. And it's just like, what? And it is so good. And there, there aren't really any words to explain how good this book is. I mean, at, right at the start, it is very, very difficult to take in. And it is quite slow paced. Not in a bad way, though. It's quite a slow paced. And it's quite difficult to take it all in. Can you hear that siren? Stop now. But there, there, there was a car alarm. The world, it does take quite a long time for the world to sink in. But once it does, it is amazing. It is so original and unique, and you will enjoy it. So I better stop rambling now. Okay, but if you haven't read it and you've watched my spoilers, why? Why? Why did you do that? Did you think that was a good idea? It's not a good idea. Naughty. <laughs> That's me trying to be assertive. It just doesn't work, does it? If you have read it and you 
read or listen to me with spoilers, then cool. Maybe you read it and you want to see what other people think of it. Pretty good plan. And if you are thinking of reading it, then read it. Read it. See, assertive doesn't work for me, I can't do it. Right, so that is the end of my review um, about Daughter of Smoke and Bone by Lainey Lani Taylor. I'm going to do that every single time I mention her name, I'm just going to say both of them because at least you can't get both of them wrong. So I th hope you've enjoyed me discussing Daughter of Smoke and Bone. That is the end of my review slash ramble slash fangirl slash <sighs> so I'm not at a point where I can say comment rate subscribe yet because that's you can only do that when you've got like 200 subscribers so I'm just gonna stop so okay goodbye have I hope you had a nice Christmas and a nice new year because that's always nice to say and I shall see you soon goodbye <laughs>